So uh, we thought we'd mix it up a little bit. Um, we're going to do uh, like, a, like a little five minute overview on the company and then a little Q&A. Um, hopefully the slides are on. That would be nice. No? Would be good. Ah, here we go. They're up. Um, so a little bit about uh, LegalZoom. In my mind, I'm going to pace a little bit before we sit down for it. So um, the vision for LegalZoom is we want to democratize law. We think it's hard enough. I mean, most of the entrepreneur CEOs here, business is hard enough. Uh, what we want to do is take legal and tax, the necessary accounting, these necessary evils, starting it up and try and make it a frictionless, magical, affordable experience because you have other things to worry about besides those. So when we want to democratize law, what that means to us is to make it consistently high quality, affordable and personalized. Uh, and so uh, really making it, and when we think of law, there's big law and small law. And we think of big law that, you know, the large companies that we spend $800 an hour for, that's not LegalZoom's market. We work for small businesses and families, right? So the middle class and most small businesses. So that's largely a world of solo practitioners, boutique law firms. Um, and uh, this is someone that we have featured in our ad. Uh, and what he'll say is something like, it was so easy for me. I didn't think uh, it'd be that easy to start my LLC. You know, I just followed the guidelines. Next things I knew, I had a company. Now he's got uh, five stores in Austin. Uh, we have an interesting business model because it's a mix of transaction subscription. And so it begins with the most common legal needs of small business and families, which is typically a document. And we have a variety of, of services. It could be forming an LLC or filing a trademark or, or doing your last will. And we'll give you basically a flat fee document. Um, typically, those prices will be about 80% lower than that of a solo attorney would charge. So you're about 20% of the price point, but consistently high quality. And that covers a lot of frequency and high volume of kind of small business and personal needs. And then what happens, about half the people that start off with a document then, then enroll in one of our subscription services. And typically that has something to do with compliance or attorney advice. And it basically says, hey, let's help keep your business compliant. You have access uh, to an attorney. So for what many lawyers may charge for an hour, we'll give you unlimited half-hour consultation on first-time issues for a year, uh, you know, for $300 and change. Uh, now, a uh, little bit about the brand. Uh, we're the category leader. We're actually the first legal brand in the U.S. that ever was created where the majority of adult Americans recognize. So if you go to the U.S. and you say, hey, name a legal brand, a, a little more than one in four adult Americans would, would say LegalZoom. If you then ask... Uh, in an aided fashion, have you heard of LegalZoom, the number jumps to about 70%. So when you think about that unaided awareness of, you know, 28%, there's no other legal brand that's more than 1% plus or minus 1%. Now, I, I wish I could say that was, you know, just, just brilliant viral marketing, but we spent more than half a billion dollars in media <laughs> to create that brand over the last 15 years. Um, and when you think about size and scale, uh, like the internet it tends to be a category one, you know, winner takes all. Uh, in terms of those online that sell directly to small business owners, if you take us and the next 20 competitors combined, we still would be larger than them. Even just us versus, you know, one of our number two or number three market share players. We probably organically grew this year one and a half times what they've taken their whole 10 years and $50 million of funding uh, to amass. So it's, it's an unusual market in that we have thousands of competitors, but we're the only really player of scale. And just some fun facts. Uh, we start uh, about one in 10 businesses each year in the US get their start, almost one in three in California. Uh, we have about four million uh, customers. To, uh, we do a last well every four minutes. Uh, and uh, at very high quality, we have a net promoter score of 63. Just to give a sense of scale, we have over 1,200 employees, 250 uh, in the UK. Um, uh, we have, and then we work with about 1,000 third-party attorneys, not our employees, but third-party attorneys that help service our customers. And we're global. Uh, we're in all 50 states and also uh, the UK where we are actually a law firm. My favorite 
uh, chart is this one, and it's, uh, it actually shows the lifetime value of our small business customers. And what you see is every year the lifetime value goes up in a meaningful way. So when we look at what took four years in 2011 to amass in terms of lifetime value, we now do that in about six to nine months. And to me, is, it shows that the team has been fulfilling our mission of not only helping you start your business, but to help you start and grow your business. So when we think of that kind of lifetime value accumulation, it has to do with more deeply partnering with our customers, engaging with them more frequently over time. Uh, and so just some fun facts. Uh, I think a little unusual for the internet, uh, we've done about one million of primary capital. Um, and in the last 13, we've, you know, real, basically the angel funding has been the entire primary funding. We've done about one million of primary, about 800 million or so of secondary, but 100% secondary. Um, so the, uh, the relatively high gross margins, north of 70%, um, almost negative working capital. It's interesting, we get paid 100% up front uh, by our customers, and then we pay for the media almost that, that they that helped acquire them about 30 days after we received the money from the customers. Uh, pretty compelling unit economics. We've got an LTV to CAC uh, north of four this year, going to north of five. We're a little traditional. We actually actually look at all fully loaded customer acquisition costs and then lifetime value. And we're accelerating growth um, significantly with a lot of visibility. I remember I sat down with Dipan, what was it, about 18 months ago? And you said, rule of 40, you know, which is, I guess in the, in the private equity world, that's uh, your, EBITDA re your EBITDA percentage margin plus your growth rate. So how do you balance between growth and profitability? And you're like, well, we really like things north of 40. And I think last year we were 30 odd, and this year we're about 53. Um, so I hope that makes you happy now. It, it, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, John, uh, disruption, a uh, tricky concept in the legal industry. Why don't you um, talk about how you think about that and how big the, the global opportunity is? Sure. I, I kind of think of disruption as a uh, collateral benefit of creative problem solving. So, they always say, look at the, on the consumer value proposition of price, service, or quality. You want to pick, you know, typ people, people typically pick two out of three. But if you can actually produce consistently high quality and great high touch service at very affordable pricing, somehow when you solve for that, it becomes disruptive. Um, and uh, I, I don't think we intended to disrupt the market. We were just intending to democratize law, and that's what happened. Uh, but in the US, it's about 100 billion spent by small businesses and families. Uh, the UK is, uh, uh, in aggregate, considerably larger than that and then the rest of the world. So I think you know, there's hundreds of billions of dollars of TAM out there, um, but we're just focused uh, right now in solving a problem. So you started in the US, reached revenues, really good revenue scale, excellent growth. Uh, we have the speech head in the UK. Talk a bit about Europe. Sure, so uh, there's a Legal Services Act that was passed in the UK that allowed, it was the first major legal market to allow corporate ownership of law firms. So to us, where we're a non-lawyer, uh, non-law firm in the US, that prohibits us from doing nine out of 10 things. In the UK, the ability to own a law firm, we have 250 people there, allows us to serve the full gamut of needs. So it's a critical place for us to expand. Uh, we have about 250 people there, and now we're using that as a base to expand through Europe. Last question, what, what's exciting you now, next, next few years? Uh, I feel it's been, what? 17 years to the starting line. Uh, now we have a brand in this platform and a great team, uh, but we are 10xing the level of investment. When we think about uh, innovation, brand new services that we've never offered before at LegalZoom, we're 10xing that level of investment over the next three years to really fill out from one out of 10 legal needs by frequency to service eight out of 10 at the end of three years. So that, I think, we begin to truly fulfill our mission. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Cool.